And in the B part of 38, it says that you have been furious with your anointed or that commissioned one. And so, and that's also meaning that referring to the Messiah, lowercase m, not Messiah as meaning Christ. And so commentaries, the commentary said this about Messiah. Nearly everyone knows the Hebrew word Messiah or Messiah. It is an important word for Orthodox Jews, but especially for Christians. General, general usage. Messiah, anointed or anointed one, is used about 40 times in the Hebrew Bible, mostly in Samuel and Psalms. The word is a noun or adjective derived from the verb Mesha, to anoint or to spread a liquid upon. Most Christians are surprised to find out that the word is used much more frequently in the Old Testament for anointed figures other than Messiah, whom God told Moses would come to deliver his people in Deuteronomy 18. 18. Occasionally, Messiah is used for a high priest since he was anointed when put into office. Generally, however, the king is meant. Even kings who turned out poorly were messiahs, in quotes, in the lesser sense of having been anointed into office. Sometimes the king was called the anointed of the Lord, Messiah, or Yahweh. The really amazing thing is that the Gentile king Cyrus is called his anointed or his Messiah in Isaiah 45, 1. Here it must mean that God had ordained this pagan king to do his bidding in world history in a way to benefit his chosen people. The blessing involved delivering Israel from Babylonian captivity. Of course, deliverance is a standard messianic motif for the one we know as the Messiah with a capital M. And now going back to looking at uh, where it, it talked about King Cyrus, about the Gentile King Cyrus and that you can find that uh, information in Isaiah 45. And so a lot of um, uh, Bible uh, prophecies uh, talk, uh, mentioned uh, President Donald Trump as being the uh, King Cyrus of our time, uh, being that it's mentioned in Psalm, uh, I'm sorry, Isaiah 45, and being that uh, President Trump is the 45th president of the United States right now. And so, you know, you know, that's dealing with that. Um, no, may face some flack on that, but that just, you know, you know, what's going around in the um, religious world or the Christian world about that Bible prophecy. Now, uh, going back uh, to Psalm 89, uh, Looking at 39, line 39, it says, You have renounced the covenant of your servant. Uh, you have profaned his crown by casting it to the ground. And I know, excuse me, Father. I know a lot of people are saying, I don't think Donald Trump is considered the Messiah. But even if it, it was referring to him in Bible prophecy, it's a lowercase m. It's not a capital M. He is not the Messiah. There is only one capital M Messiah is Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Okay, so going back to uh, line 39. You have renounced the covenant of your servant. Uh, you have profaned his crown by casting it to the ground. And so, you know, see, he's talking about all these things that God has done to his servant. And then so, and that sends us to Lamentations 5.16. And so this is considered a, a royal psalm, you know, but as you can see, it has some type of uh, lamenting aspects of it as well. And so that's 516, Lamentations 516, that says, The crown has fallen from your head. Woe to us, for we have sinned. And so, and that's, and if the crown has fallen, it's because of something that we have done, not something that God did. All right, because God is going to take out that rod of chastisement. He's going to discipline. He's going to uh, chastise. And so, and it make it seem like that, you know, God is not who he says. God is who he say he is. 
And so then it goes on to you have profane, you know, talked about he had defiled his crown by casting it to the ground. 40. You have broken down all his hedges. So all that hedge of protection has been broken down. You have brought his strongholds to ruin. So all the fortresses that he had to protect him, God brought those to ruin. 41. All who pass by the way plunder him. He is reproached to his neighbors. So all who pass by is taking all his goods and stuff like that. You know, all the booty, B-O-T-T-Y, of because all he doesn't have any protection. So they have easy access to go and take those goods for from him. 42. You have exalted the right hand of his adversaries. You have made all his enemies rejoice. All right. Uh, so remember that right hand is the strongest hand. So he's saying that, you know, God has exalted the right hand of the adversaries and uh, made all the enemies rejoice. You have also turned back the edge of his sword and have not sustained him in the battle. And so, you know, it's like the servant was going um, to battle, but God had, uh, God wasn't with him. He didn't have that protection. And so, and clearly God is not going to be with us if we, we continue in that sin. Because God is a holy God. He cannot be around sin. He cannot be around sin at all. And so, um, then it says in 44, you have made his glory cease. That means the splendor or his brightness stop and cast his throne down to the ground. 45, the days of the of his youth you have shortened. You have covered him with shame, Selah. And so all of that, uh, that, you know, Ethan is saying that God has done. So we're going to go ahead and pause there and we'll pick it up in 46.